This is a cold IPA, a crisp and dry hot bomb that I brewed in my garage. In this video, I'll show you how I made it and walk you through the entire brewing process. Let's brew. Cold IPAs are all about hops. And like an India Pale Lager or IPL, cold IPAs typically have a moderate level of alcohol and they're brewed with a highly fermentable adjunct like flaked rice or flaked corn. This gives the beer a very crisp and dry profile with very little malt flavor. Cold IPAs use lager yeast, but they're fermented fairly warm to limit the sulfur compounds that you'll usually find in IPLs. Lastly, cold IPAs have big dry hop additions to give them explosive hop aroma that you'll find in a West Coast IPA. The first main step of brewing is the mash. And what we're doing in this step is mixing hot water with our brewing grains to create a sweet liquid called wort. For this six and a half gallon batch, I'm starting with about four and three quarter gallons of reverse osmosis water that I'll heat to 171 degrees. Our target mash temperature for this beer is 148 degrees. But once we pump over our water to the mash tun and add in our grains, the system is gonna cool down. So we'll wanna add a little extra heat at the beginning. While the water is heating up, I'm gonna run the grain through the mill and get it ready for the mash. Here's what the crushed grain looks like. The key things on a good crush is a crack on the husk of the grain so that the water can get in there, but it's important that the husks are relatively intact and not pulverized. The husk of the grain will later help us filter the wort when we recirculate it through the grain bed at the end of the mash. My mash tun is now at 156 degrees. What I'm gonna do now is adjust my water chemistry. This is not a critical step. It will just help accentuate the hops and adjust the mouthfeel of it. So if you're new to brewing, feel free to skip this step. The important thing you wanna do is use good tasting chlorine-free water. I'm also adding two milliliters of lactic acid to my water to ensure the room temperature pH of the mash stays within about 5.2 to 5.6. Now it's time to add in the grain, so I'm gonna shut off the heater and the pump. Now this step is called the dough in. We want to avoid getting any dough balls or clumps of grain, so it's important to mix this really well when we add it to the water to make sure that grain gets fully saturated. Okay, all the grain is mixed in. The system has cooled to 148 degrees, which is our mash temperature. I'm gonna turn on the pump and slowly open up my recirculation valve to begin recirculating through the bed for just a few minutes. It's been about 10 minutes, I'm now gonna take a sample and measure the pH. I have a little bowl of ice water here to cool the sample down to room temp, and then we'll take the measurement. While the mash is finishing up, I'm gonna add my sparge water to the HLT with one milliliter of lactic acid and preheat that to 168 degrees. The acid addition is only necessary to keep the mash pH stable during the lot. While we wait for the mash to finish, please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos. It's been 45 minutes. I'm now gonna raise the mash temp to 168 for about 10 minutes for the mash out. This step locks in our sugar profile and also helps efficiently rinse the grain so we can get as much into the boil kettle as possible. I 
have about six gallons transferred to the boil kettle. I'm now gonna turn the heater on to start bringing this up to a boil while we wait for that last three gallons to transfer. We are at our full volume of nine gallons, so I'm gonna give this a quick stir and take a sample to measure our pre-boil gravity. This is our first hop addition that will boil for an hour. We have some Chinook, some Warrior, and Cascade. There are 15 minutes remaining in the boil. I'm now adding in one World Flock tablet, which is used to help clarify the beer and flocculate some of the proteins in the wort. We have five minutes left to go. I'm adding in the last of the hops. This is some Centennial, some Citra, and Simcoe. turning off the heater and I'm going to turn on the pump to whirlpool for about five minutes. And then we'll give this a 10 minute rest before knocking out. This tube right here is the outlet of my chilling water. I just run this into a bucket and use it for laundry. I'm also gonna connect my oxygen to the outlet of the wart so that we can oxygenate during knockout. And last but not least, I'm connecting my groundwater to the chiller so that we can cool this wart down. For most beers, I like to chill the fermenter to about two degrees below my desired fermentation temperature, which for this IPA is 60 degrees, so I'm gonna chill this down to 58 degrees. Before I add in the yeast, I'm gonna take a small sample to measure the oxygen concentration, the pH, and also the original gravity. Last step for today is to pitch the yeast. This is some 3470 yeast that I harvested from a previous batch yesterday, and I'm gonna use it for this batch right now. I'm gonna allow the tank to free rise to 60 degrees, and I'll keep it there for a few days until we hit a gravity of 1.020. And this beer is gonna get two dry hop additions during fermentation. Once we hit a gravity of 1.020, I'll allow the tank to free rise to 68 degrees to finish fermentation. And once fermentation is complete, I'll let the fermenter sit for another two to three days until that diastole rest is complete. I'll leave a link in the description regarding the diastole rest process. And once complete, crash the beer down to about 36 to 38 degrees for at least a few days. Then it's time to carbonate and package. Thank you guys so much for hanging out for Brew Day. If you're interested, check out the other brewing videos here on my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.